The goal of this lesson is to introduce object-oriented programming. Now, this way of building a program may be new to you if you're coming from an older language like C. However, we will be using objects to control the behavior of our robot in future movies, so it's worth taking a moment now to understand how object-oriented programming works. So just what is object-oriented programming? Object-oriented programming, commonly referred to as OOP, is a programming paradigm or a specific way of designing a program. It allows us to think of the data in our program in terms of real-world objects with both properties and behaviors. Now these objects can be passed around throughout our program. Objects are typically nouns, such as persons, places, or things that we want to keep track of in our program. Now each object that we might want to keep track of also has a list of behaviors or actions that the object can perform. The object that we're keeping track of might also have a set of properties or data that is associated with it. When using an instance of an object in Python, we use the dot operator to access its methods, which are the actions that the object can perform. Occasionally, we need to provide additional data. Here we have a dog object. Now our dog can perform various actions called methods, such as bark, roll over, and sleep. There's also data that we might want to keep track of, such as our dog's name, his age, and breed. In this example, we use the dot operator to set our dog's breed, dog.setBreed. We can pass additional data to the method in the form of a text string. So here we see the string German Shepherd in single quotes. And using the dot operator, we can also give our dog object a name or make him bark. Here we have a student object. The methods or actions that our student can perform include walking to school, studying for a length of time, and writing a test. The data that we wish to keep about the student includes things like their student number, math grade, and English grade. Now in this example, we use the dot operator to set the student's math grade or to make the student write a test. Let's now look at a VEX example. Here we have the robot's left motor, the object being instructed to spin, which is the method or action to be performed by the motor. We then pass additional data to the method as parameters, such as the direction we want the motor to spin in, which itself is another object instance, and the speed that we want the motor to turn. In this next example, we can instruct the system to wait for a period of time before moving on to the next line in the program. Here a system object is instructed to sleep. The time interval that the system will sleep for is 3 seconds, which is being passed as a parameter. As we conclude this tutorial, here are some additional things to think about. Earlier we used the example of a dog. Using the idea that an object is a noun, person, place, or thing, that gets controlled by the programming language, and methods are verbs or actions that the object can perform or have performed to it. Uh, which other real examples could you come up with to explain the concept of object-oriented programming? We're going to be working with objects quite a bit as we begin to program the VEX robot and control and interact with its motors and sensors. So do get used to the idea of data objects as things or nouns that can perform actions or have actions performed to it. Uh, these are the verbs to manipulate data properties that are associated with the object, which are the object's attributes. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button and then subscribing for regular updates on using Robot Mesh Studio with VEX robots.